We begin this session six, looking at developing the evangelical life, faith relating to Franciscan women and men, and also in this section, we'll be looking at those called chapter 12 is people, people of faith relating as Franciscan women and men and the Franciscan evangelists, a prayerful missionary unit seven. So it's unit 12 and unit seven that we'll be looking at today. To review from our previous session, units 11 and 13, we looked at the Franciscan view of the environment, brother, son, sister, moon, and we looked at images, different images of the canticle of creatures. And we combined that as a comparison with traditional and contemporary artwork and representation along with the economy and global reality from a Franciscan comparison perspective as a comparison to the images of the economic way of the cross and how is that global reality part of our tradition today in the 21st century. We looked at the discussion questions. What are some of the ways you consider God acting in your life at St. Bonaventure University for integrity of the environment. Do you see a reality for the optic of the poor with the Allegheny Franciscans All right, St. Bonaventure University? Compare the verses with the economy and global reality from a Franciscan perspective. Could we at St. Bonaventure University or the Allegheny Franciscans create or compose our own canticle. Unit seven, we are looking at the Franciscan evangelist, a prayerful missionary. In the new text, uh, you'll find the title to be the Franciscan evangelist developing a contemplative consciousness. And Unit 12, previously people of faith relating as Franciscan women and men of faith. And the new title for the unit 12 is gender, reality, stumbling blocks and breakthroughs. But you'll see the similarities and the differences brought out in both of those units. So in terms of conver conversion, Moments of conversion for Francis was Francis meeting the leper. Again, here is another representation in artwork of Francis meeting that leper. And notice the people in the background are shocked that Francis is even looking at, gazing upon versus also touching the leper. And for Claire, that moment of conversion was when Claire's investiture to the Franciscan family on that sacred Palm Sunday night uh, when Claire met Francis and the companions at the Port Sincula. Francis and Claire, Christ Center of Life. This is a piece of artwork from uh, Mary Esther Stewart and uh, looking at Claire of Assisi, her hands of Francis and Claire reaching out over uh, Assisi, Bonagente, the good people, Claire's rule for the privilege of poverty and prayer before the San Damiano cross, that prayer for guidance daily. Some of the sharings from uh, Allegheny Franciscans at previous chapters was Francis.
Franciscan evangelist from John, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Again, in this representation of the hands of Francis and Claire, in terms of the evangelical life, before the San Damiano cross, gaze, contemplate, and consider as they prayed before that cross daily. In Claire's message, gaze upon Christ, consider Christ, contemplate Christ, as we desire to imitate Christ. And this is from the second letter of Agnes to Agnes from Prague. May we take time today to simply gaze upon Christ, to consider the infinite and generous love of Jesus for us and to contemplate this love so we might desire to imitate Jesus and know what it means to love without limit. This is taken from uh, Joanne Brzezinski, Gaze, Consider, Contemplate. Murray Bodo in this slide, we take our cell with us. Wherever we are or wherever we are going, we have our cell with us for brother body, is the cell and the soul is the hermit who dwells in it meditating there and praying to god therefore if the soul does not preserve quiet and solitude in its own cell of what profit is a cell made by hands and this is from the legend of perugia Another form uh, in terms of being that evangelical life that we live out the gospel way in this slide is the labyrinth, a meditative reflection. In the early Middle Ages, people walked the path of a maze in a spirit of prayer and penance. In the Cathedral of Chartres in France, with the help of such maze, they experience with their whole being what it means to keep walking towards the goal, to the center, in spite of all detours. So during the Middle Ages, when it was, wasn't safe to take pilgrimages, these labyrinths formed a way to journey into God. Our Franciscan missionary spirit. In this slide, a spirit present within us and among us, calling us to be faithful, faithful in honoring the commitment made to embrace all creation. An embrace of reverence for the sacred within each of us others and all of creation. An embrace of celebration of the diversity, sacredness and connectedness in the cosmic community of the universe. An embrace of the vulnerability needed to change attitudes and structures of injustices. An embrace of the receptivity needed to respond to the challenges of the poor, an embrace of the justice needed in the presence of diversity, an embrace of the absorption needed for us to create a new life out of oppression, an embrace of the vision needed for us to be <laughs> a healing sacred an intimate presence to all in the earth community. At one university, at Brycliffe University, for example, we took various sites on the campus as 
our own Franciscan pilgrimage walk. So we had a meditative labyrinth. We had a statue of St. Clair. We had a peace pole. We had statues of St. Anthony and Francis. We had the prayer of St. Francis in front of the administration building. Within the chapel was Our Lady of Grace. And on the walkway, is a canticle of creatures and the San Damiano cross present also in another part of campus. So within, within the campus, someone could do a meditative walk, but think of ways in your present living situation of where it is possible to take that time for solitude. In higher education in our Franciscan tradition, or the Association of Franciscan Colleges and Universities, pilgrims, companions to Franciscan places. This is part of the, uh, when you go on a pilgrimage to Assisi, is again, the, um, shell and the towel within the shell, which is representation of, again, a pilgrim on a journey. But that symbol of the towel cross is a universal uh, symbol of conversion for all Franciscans. Franciscan sacred places. So for Francis, it was the Port Sincula. And here's a version of the Port Singular years ago, a hand sketch of what it might have looked like. And today it's within in a small chapel within the larger basilica of Our Lady of the Angels Church. Here's another sacred place is San Damiano where Francis received that moment of conversion of hearing a voice saying, Francis, go repair my house. So Francis illuminated by Jesus's crucifixion is called to rebuild my house. An earlier version and a present version. In rebuild or restore, every Franciscan community ends their prayer every day with we adore you, O Lord Jesus Christ, here and in all your churches throughout all the world. And we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. At St. Bonaventure University, this is part of the stained glass windows that tell the story of St. Bonaventure. But Bonaventure, Francis experienced the stigmata. Bonaventure wrote about what Francis experienced. Christ in Francis. And this stained glass window is Bonaventure preaching to his brothers. That whole aspect of Bonaventure's Christology, Christ-centered of human history, is taken from uh, Zachary Hayes and uh, Joseph Reichel and Andre Serino's uh, uh, publication. So we see the Alpha and the Omega in the middle, beginning and the end. All contradictions and opposites within our life coincide in the very center, Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. So <clears throat> joy and pain, sweetness and bitterness, vision and blindness, light and dark, darkness. Bonaventure's mission, the person Francis. Bonaventure was a theologian 
and university professor by trade. And yet he loved with all his might. He fell in love, was deeply touched by and fascinated with the person of Francis of Assisi. He reached out to embrace the cross that was placed before him. He delved deeper into his ongoing passionate search for how to live the Franciscan life. Now at the end of our journey, we have come full circle back to the reality we noted as key to understanding Bonaventure's journey, namely deep restlessness and the desire for peace. And the way to peace is not so much like a stroll through a garden, but more like a difficult trek. It is a journey that demands a great deal of endurance and patience, but reveals itself as filled with surprise and tension. How many crosses are there in human lives? In this image of the Christocentrism, depth of humiliation to liberated creation. And this is Francis receiving the stigmata. Uh, this is part of St. Bonaventure University's chapel from the seraphic angel. Here at our Franciscan family, as we mentioned before, the first theologian teacher of of the Franciscan family was Anthony and Claire. And here is St. Anthony and St. Francis and the statue of St. Claire blessing the bread. So it was very symbolic at the 75th anniversary uh, at, Saint, at Briarcliff University, which is run by the Dubuque Franciscans in Sioux City, Iowa, that the symbol of Claire represented that simplicity within Claire and a truer version of who Claire was. Prayer of St. Francis is another part on the journey, it is a prayer attributed to Francis, but it comes out of the admonitions. Make me an instrument of your peace, where there is hatred, let me sow love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. Again, it goes back to that alpha and the omega of being Christ-centered. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. As I mentioned, you might say the admonitions are the Beatitudes of Francis. Uh, his works by Bob Karras, who did an interpretation of the sources and the meaning. So you can see uh, from the chapters of the admonitions of concern for evil of one's own will, concern perfect obedience, which is listening, appropriateness to how you treat your superiors, uh, being boastful, glory to the cross, imitation of the God, good works filed through knowledge, avoiding sin and envy, on love, on care of the body, evil to another, discerning the spirit of God, patience, poverty of spirit, on peace, <laughs> purity of heart. So this is <coughs> just one chapter, chapter two, admonitions two through 16. Cha uh, admonitions 17 through 28 in this slide, the humble servant, compassion towards one's neighbor, humble servant, a good and vain religious about being frivolous and talkative, about correction, humility, true love, about being one with servant of God, honoring clerics, virtue driving out vice, the good 
which is hidden. Here's a representation of artwork at Briarcliff University by one of their professors who's an artist, a representation of the canticle of creatures. Again, that care for the earth, but being evangelical people, we care for everyone. And here's um, the canticle expressed uh, from Francis, another piece of artwork, painting. The prayer for guidance that Francis and Claire prayed for daily. Most high glorious God, bring light to the darkness of our hearts. Give us right faith, certain hope and perfect charity. God grant us wisdom and insight so we might always discern your holy and true will. Francis and Claire continue to see that whole vision and image and mirror image. You are what you are in the eyes of God that this slide continues to be woven into all our presentations on Build with Living Stones. The Tau cross in the eyes of God, Francis and Claire, all in unison. Blessing of Claire. Uh, this is uh, with the help of Jean-Francois Gaudet Kelly Garris at um, Briarcliff University, the dedication, the chapel, a statue of St. Clair. And this is the true blessing of St. Clair. May God be with you and you always with God. And it is Clair blessing bread, that whole aspect of simplicity and the humble servant versus what you'll see most often is Clair holding the mantra, which is not a true representation of who Clair was every day for everyone. Franciscan perspective, peacemaking and enculturation. Uh, it was very common for most Franciscan institutes, places to have peace poles uh, as a representation of in different languages to show that um, may peace prevail on earth in different languages. And this is the peace poll. Um, very symbolic at Briarcliff University in front of a statue of Francis and the wolf, uh, which again is a form of peacemaking. This artist uh, from Assisi, I have done what is mine to do. May Christ teach you what is yours to do in Francis's last moments on earth and that symbolicness of the uh, Basilica of Francis and the sunset. The Franciscan secular tradition, Francis's letter to the faithful. Uh, this is taken from our Franciscan pilgrimage program. But again, the true Franciscans, early Franciscans were the lay penitents. Um, men and women of faith, which is now the third order. And this slide represents that whole aspect of the many parts of being from the letter of the faithful. In Francis's later admonition and exhortation to the brothers and sisters of penance, and let us love our neighbors as ourselves, and if anyone does not want to love them as himself, let him at least not do them any harm, but let him do good. In uh, the world gathering of secular Franciscans and the Assisi talked, in 2005, the general chapter of the secular Franciscan order what came out of that is in this slide represents Sister Catherine Drexel Regional Fraternity, um, the Secular Franciscan Apostolic Commissions called to social justice. 
Peace and Justice Commission, Work Commission, Family Commission, Ecology Commission, Youth and Young Adult Commission, and the Formation Commission. Again, those moments of conversion, but living with diversity. And this artist represents Francis living among the lepers. So who are the lepers for us today? And who do we accept those people of diversity today? The Franciscan conversion. Developing the Franciscan person is an ongoing conversion to be Christ-centered and live a gospel way of life. Franciscan orientation to your spiritual journey. Franciscan vision of God, the human person, and the world as well as their dynamic interacts relationship. Developing the whole person within the Christian Franciscan tradition. Francis looked into the eyes of the leper. Again, here's another aspect of that conversion of an artist, Corinne Didashame, of Francis coming down to the same level and gazing upon within the person. In terms of developing the Franciscan person, we are reminded by Joseph Reichel and Andre Serino of the whole journey starts with desire and leads to peace. And this is taken from soul's journey into God with desire. Notice um, the different thoughts that are used and the bold print of desire to peace, eyes, mirrors, contemplation. Again, looking within as well as looking without. And Francis and Claire reached out to Bonagente, the good people of Assisi, Pax et Bonum, a piece of artwork by Mary Esther Stewart of the hands of Francis and Claire reaching out to the people of Assisi. In this artist, uh, Clairvaux, uh, Christians meeting Muslims, peacemaking and enculturation of Francis meeting the Sultan but reaching out and being one with others from other religions, other cultures. And as mentioned before in a previous presentation, this horn that was given to Francis by the Sultan is still present today in um, the Basilica of St. Francis downstairs in one of the glass cases of some of the authentic material that we still have today from the time of Francis. Francis meeting the Sultan. Again, in terms of being evangelical people and people of faith, it's our presence, our dialogue, and our witness that that represents us as Franciscans. As peacemakers taken from Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God taken from the Beatitudes. The rule of St. Clair, the privilege of poverty, of the simplicity of our Franciscan heritage for us to live with the limited resources that are necessary for us in the world, but to share what we have with others. And in, in Claire's third letter to Agnes, I consider you a co-worker of God himself and a support of the weak members of his infallible body. In this slide, uh, again, how are we evangelical people living in the world today? This is taken from the Office of AIDS Ministry in Fall River, Massachusetts on the, on the celebration of National World's Aid Day. But are we redemptive people? And taken from John, so what are redemptive people? 
Jesus came that we may have life and have it to the full. His presence and love in each of our lives brings us to wholeness. He came to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up all our wounds. Being graced with his presence, we become spirit-filled and alive and can rejoice in his love. For us, a love which continually recreates and brings new life and new renewed hope. We have been redeemed and therefore we become redemptive people, knowing we are loved and able to love in return. People of heart in a culture of violence are taken from Joseph Reichel and Andre Serino's writing, a quote from Richard Raw: when the scriptures speak of the human person, the words used are spirit, soul, and body. This is the person who loves. When our body, souls, and spirit are in balance, we are then biblical persons of heart. Spirituality of the heart is the balance of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. Franciscans International is called to secular Franciscans. This is taken from Matthias Doyle uh, from the United Nations 15th anniversary. In the forefront, secular Franciscans promoting justice, instruments of peace. While all Franciscans have an important part to play in these endeavors, it is especially appropriate that the secular Franciscans lead the way. They are our best qualified and best situated for carrying out this work forward. Pax et bonum. Again, think of the images of beauty that we've talked about in other sessions. The beauty manifested in the Franciscan tradition, Pax et bonum. Francis and Claire saw the beauty within all of God's creation. You are what you are in the eyes of God. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Peace, justice, and integrity of creation for all. Pax et bono. Again, this is representation of that compromise of Francis and the wolf, but how we can be peacemakers in the world today. Mary, a vision, a woman of vision. Mary, Franciscan heart of peace, the symbol of a, 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 miss, a Franciscan missionary of Mary, artist, Mary on the way, and that whole symbol of the Birkenstocks uh, backpack on her way to visit Elizabeth to tell her the good news. Again, we are grounded in our evangelical life to be people of faith. Through the letters of the faithful, developing that contemplative consciousness, Francis's letter to the faithful, to the sisters and brothers of penance, Jesus breaking open the darkness of prestige and control to bring to bring to light God's desire that we become like children. Jesus breaking open the darkness of arrogance and pride to bring to light God's desire that we become humble. The earth community, looking at uh, the slide from the Alleghenies, um, Franciscans, an embrace of the justice needed in the presence of diversity, an embrace of the absorption needed for us to create a new life out of oppression, an embrace 
of the vision needed for us to be a healing, sacred, intimate presence to all in the earth community. Embrace of this vision, Jesus breaking open the darkness of self-sufficiency to bring to light God's desire that we become disciples. Jesus did it in his time. Francis did it in his time. Will I in my time? On the road again, uh, this is uh, Mission Service in Honduras with uh, Briarcliff University. But again, how we take the word with us, wherever we go, we share in the simplicity of others on the road. Discussion questions for today. How do you accept people who are different from you? Are you open to them or do you avoid them? Do you respect people of other religions and cultures or do you see yourself as better than them? Identify the major concerns regarding women locally in your part of the world. What may be considered to be specifically Franciscan response to sexism. In what ways have I ministered to lepers, social outcasts, or the marginal persons of one kind or another in society? What parallels can I draw between them and me? How have I overcome or how do I need to overcome any feelings of repulsion or rejection towards the others of my world. Continuing that group discussion for reflection, what does it mean that we must be evangelized? What does it mean that in evangelization, love is the principle of action? This brings us to the end of our presentation today. Session six, looking at the evangelical person and looking at ways that we, realities and stumbling blocks and breaking through of gender and acceptance of others. Our next session, session seven, will be our last session looking at unit 14, the Franciscan role in the church. <laughs>